Good day and welcome back to the Herbert and Lodge Show. We have with us Pastor Ronald E. Terry, Sr. Welcome. Welcome. Glad to be here this morning. How long have you been preaching? 50 plus years. It was 50 years in November and uh, headed now toward the 51st year. You started preaching up there in Minnesota somewhere. No, I started in Kentucky. In the Kentucky? Hills of Kentucky. Okay. Wheelwright, Kentucky. Okay. A little town that's almost defunct, but still some folk live there. How did you get into the ministry? Well, to be honest, I knew it all along. I knew it at six years old. My old pastor, Reverend Jones, said I was going to preach. And I, I, I had the urge all along, even though I was in music, I... I kind of knew that was my destiny. But I chose not to do it at first because I didn't feel like I could live the life that, uh, that a preacher ought to live. And at 12 years old, I confessed it to my daddy who was pastoring. But then I got scared. I said, well, you know, at 12, 13 years old, I mean, to cut off all of my fun. And, and I can't preach at no 12, but I knew it at 12. Mm -hmm. And so when did you confess it and have your first trial sermon? I confessed my, confessed it and had my first trial sermon in uh, November of 1960. 1960? Yes. Okay. And uh, you've been pastoring. Now you have an anniversary coming up? Yes, sir. At New Fellowship Baptist Church. New Fellowship Baptist Church. We have an anniversary. What anniversary is that? Uh, it would be my 34th anniversary as pastor of the church. That's a long time. It's a long time. How do you pastor so long and efficient and effective to a diverse group of people and... Uh, keep them moving in the right direction and keep the church moving. You have a beautiful church over there. Well, I tell you, the secret is loving the people. The heart of a pastor has to be one like Christ. He has to love those who don't love him, love those who love him, love those who don't love anybody. <laughs> That's got to be difficult. <laughs> that is very difficult. You uh and I guess that's my problem with the, the newer generation of preachers. They, they don't seem to project that all-encompassing love. It's about generally they, they preach and they have unlisted phone numbers, and and you got to go through three sets of people to get to them. I'm an old-fashioned pastor. I believe in hands-on, very paternalistic. Help to name all the children I can and going to be there when you're sick. That's my secret. Well, that's, that's it. Now, you're going to have, that's going to be a program that will uh, focus on your uh, years pastoring, 34 years pastoring uh, a New Fellowship Baptist Church in Macon on Church Street. It is the Church of Love on Church Street. Okay. Uh, when is that? That, uh, program, well, it's a whole week of celebration, Okay. beginning uh, March, uh, the first Sunday in March, and uh, they have preachers during the week. Uh, I think uh, Reverend Stanley will be there. That's a good minister. Reverend uh, at Lundy Chapel will be there. Oh, he, he, Corbett, he, Corbett, Corbett will be he's there. doing wonderful things over Reverend, there at North Macon. Yes, sir. Reverend Rockmore will be there. Oh, that's my buddy, T.O. Rockmore. Yes, sir. And Kassane. Oh, Lord. I mean, if you lived in Macon and have never heard T.O. Rockmore. The Silver Bells. Yes, sir. Then yes. You're going to heaven with a minor sign on your back. <laughs> and then Reverend Dumas. Uh, Derek. Uh, yeah, Derek. I, carrying on his father, his grandfather's tradition. Yes, I. Derek, I helped ordain as a deacon. I was there when he preached his first sermon, helped ordain Derek, and helped moderate the meeting to call Derek. So he's like a, a nephew of mine. Well, he's a, he's a, you got some, some heavyweights uh, doing your... Uh, all, all of them boys can preach. All of them, all them boys can preach. Uh -huh. 
And so that is going to take place when? That's uh, beginning Monday after the uh, first Sunday in March. And, of course, the uh, first Sunday morning, uh, uh, we're having regular worship. And then that afternoon is another program. And, and you know, I'm getting old, Herbert. I can't remember everything. But you got a lot of and, things going uh, on. Uh, and then on that Sunday afternoon, uh, Pastor Rains will close out. The, the next president of the Georgia Baptist uh, yeah, yeah, Yes, that is very true. He will be the next president. I mean, that's that's the in, in the Baptist church. The, the, the That's it. That's it. That's it. Because Cameron Alexander held it for a long time. 29 I thought years. 29 years as a president. Yes. He I think when he left, you guys put something on it where you can't stay but so long. Well, I... We did put in tenure, and I'm not so sure tenure is good. When you vote every year, that's tenure. And it may, it may work, have to work a little harder to get you out. But, uh, and I, I think that's one of our problems at the National Baptist Convention. As long as Dr. Jackson was there, we had a grand convention. As soon as tenure came in, we've had some problems ever since. But sometimes when you stay so long, you almost be a king, you know. Uh, well, that, that, that's the people's choice. But you they know, let I, you. I went to see, uh, I was trying to see Dr. Alexander in Atlanta once at uh, Antioch. Mm -hmm. Couldn't get to see him, couldn't hardly get to see him at all. Uh, I had, I was in line, they had statewide politicians in line to talk to him. They had everybody in, in there just waiting to see him. They just, like they was going to see the king or something. Well, if you don't have anything to offer, nobody will come right. to see you. My daddy used to say, if you catch on fire, somebody come watch you burn. <laughs> but uh, So you are going to be uh, having this big program for you, a celebration. Yeah. And also that Sunday morning, Dr. E.T. Bird of Newark, New Jersey, will be bringing the morning message. And we're excited about him. Everybody knows Dr. Bird and his singing with his choirs and what have you and preaching, and he'll be here that Sunday morning. You know, somebody told me, and they, I might have it wrong, but I think I got it right. They say in Macon and Middle Georgia that you are the best organ player in this area. And then I heard somebody else tell me, they said it was in the state. Then I heard somebody else tell me that it was in the country, that you direct these big gatherings of, uh, of, of uh, Baptists all over the country, that you are the person that's directing it and you're involved in the music with it. Well, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. I've been playing music since I was three and a half years old and uh, had my first choir at 12. And uh, my father, who was a great... Uh, person who was affiliate of all of the churches in eastern Kentucky. We had to go to a worship service at the White First Baptist Church. And they had an organ. I'd never played an organ. And I sat down and I played it just as if I'd been playing all my life. And I must have been about 14. Okay. So I guess I have my own technique, my own style. And maybe that's really why they say... Uh, I'm good or not so good. I appreciate you stopping by. You thank gave me some education this morning. Well, thank you very much. Sir. And uh, that, uh, your anniversary starts? The first Sunday in March. First Sunday in March. Yes, sir. And uh, you're going to have a hallelujah good time. I'm going to have a hallelujah good time. I'm not going to preach that Sunday, nor the next Sunday. I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i been preaching 51, you're going on 51 years, and I ought to have a Sunday or two off for myself. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you so much, sir. And we'll be right back.